Hi, uh, the reason I'm recording this video is because we are nearing uh, the launch of a major version of WPGTK, which is version 6.0. As you can see, I'm running a developer version of this in my computer, but I'm pretty sure that everything that you see in this video will be released pretty soon. So, uh, there are some major changes coming around for this release, and one of them is uh, about the template system that we use. So, the template system has drastically changed and the main objective of this change is to be able to operate with PyWall templates in WPTTK. So, there will be a, no difference between a PyWall template and a WPTTK template. This is currently not true in the current stable release, but it will be in this new major release. So, uh, previous templates done in WPTTK won't be compatible uh, straight away but let me show let me show you a bunch of reasons of why this is so and why this is adventurous and some of the uh, things that you can achieve uh, with the new template system okay so as you can see here on the left we have the new template system and on the right we have the old template system so uh, you will be able to see that the template on the left is basically uh, just a Python string format. So what it does is that it grabs a Python dictionary and it fills the values inside braces with uh, the values in the dictionary in Python. It's pretty simple but it allows us to do uh, some things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to and I'll go to that in just a second. The disadvantage, the main and only disadvantage, is that now we have to escape braces, real braces, with double braces. So instead of having terminal in a brace, you have terminal inside double braces. But that shouldn't be uh, much of an issue, as I'll show you ahead. I've actually taken care of that so that you can use all templates. You will have to upgrade them, but I've included an automated process for that in WPGTK. But more on that uh, on ahead. First, let me show you how the template system works. And I prepare an example for that. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to my home directory. And we have over here um, some generic configuration file which has some values in it. And I'm going to um, add borders here so you can see the wallpaper uh, and the whole theme. I usually don't use gaps, but anyway, I digress. Um, going back to WPGTK, we're going to add this file to our templates to create a new template. So we go ahead and click here and add our example. You can see that immediately we have an example txt.base and what it is, is an exact copy of the original file. So I'm going to open it in Emacs and I'm going to open the template file. Right now it should look uh, just about the same, but what we're going to do is that we're going to edit uh, these values to be keywords in WPGTK system and this will cause the original file to change dynamically. These things are done automatically by WPGTK, so you shouldn't have to worry about anything else more than adding the template to WPGTK. Do is I want color eight over here. I want color zero over here, and let's say I want the active color over here. I'm going to save this, and remember we have to escape the double braces so I'm going to place here this and then I'm going to open WPGTK and choose any of these themes you can see it applies globally now you can see that the colors have changed in the original file but the template has remained untouched even if I reload it so basically that's the magic of the template system in WPGTK it is more intrusive than PyWall, but it allows you for more powerful things. So, what are the main advantages of using this format and not the previous format that I had? Well, PyWall offers us the possibility of doing things like this. 
let's say I want the RGB value like this or let's say I don't need uh, I don't actually need this uh, pound symbol so I did this and it even works with keywords that are not normally defined in Pywall so it's pretty extensible so let me uh, apply a theme randomly I have a key binding for this okay so it turned out to be a white color scheme so let's reload this file and as you can see uh, we get RGB values no problem and we get a stripped value also no problem over here so you can see already you can already see the advantages of doing this with the new format instead of the old one it gives you plenty more uh, flexibility in regarding to customization so let me try again and do something that you cannot do on Pywall and that is using user defined keywords and how do we do that it's actually pretty simple what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to one common use case for CSS is being able to add a font family let's say and I'm going to add my custom keyword font1 and font2 okay so I'm going to save this in my template file I'm going to go to keywords as you can see I have a few uh, keywords to find I'm going to remove them and I'm going to add a font1 and as a value I'm going to use GoMono which is the font that I'm using right now system wide and over here I'm going to add another font let's say Comic Sans is going to be my um, let's say default font for everything else so I'm going to save that and I'm going to apply a theme, a random theme as usual with my key binding everything changed globally as you can see and if I reload the original file it should have the new values that I enter as custom keywords so this is pretty useful because you can actually use WPGTK to centralize some settings that you need applied globally Another, another neat thing about uh, the new template system is that you can define your own colors let's say I want uh, light gray for example and I go ahead and define that as FD 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 okay so I can go ahead and custom custom color and I do this apply a random theme oh right just I needed to save that so no no big there now you can see that it appeared here so the neat thing about this is that everything that applied to previous colors you can do with your own custom defined colors for example if I want my custom color in RGB I can of course do that as well so it's pretty powerful and I'm pretty excited about it because I know you guys are going to do great things with this tool okay so basically that's uh, most of the advantages that WPGTK gives you when you are using uh, the new template system beware though that if you try to use any of these modifiers or something is not a color in a hex format it will obviously crash but don't worry it will if there is an error in the template it won't actually uh, change the template so if I go ahead and try this with a key that doesn't exist what, you go what is going to happen is that all the th things that have no mistakes will change accordingly and the template that has mistakes in it will just uh, stay the same as you can see and if I keep changing things it will just remain the same until 
I remove the mistake that I made. So basically what this means is that even though um, WPGTK is pretty intrusive in that sense, um, you won't uh, corrupt your files in any um, manner. And in case that you do, WPGTK set up a backup for these cases, which as you can see is right over here. So as you can see, I have the original file backed up just in case. And another neat thing is that you can actually do things like this. So any font that you place over there is going to be, let's say, 16 pixels, right? And you can also do RGBA, as you can see over there. So it's pretty neat. For example, I can change my opacity over here. And as you can see, the RGBA value changed. It's pretty powerful and I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, but let's go back to another theme. And, um, well, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. For example, change the value, save it, regret it, and change back anything that you want. And if you happen to delete these custom keywords, because the key doesn't exist, uh, the file won't change anymore instead of corrupting your file. And basically, if you are coming from an older version of WPGTK, what you can do is this. You can either reinstall the templates, which will have an updated version when I uh, release the 6.0. You can use WPGTK install and reinstall the, the, the themes that you want. Or uh, you can actually manually update them if you don't use uh, the ones that I provide. You can just go ahead and, as an example, the template and Oh, first, let's see the content. You can see that it's the old format. And I will run an update template on Crofi and Crofi Base. As you can see, first we escape the braces, then we replace uh, the colors with color XX, which is the new format. And then if I go ahead and do this, you'll be able to see that the template has been updated. Beware that this won't work on custom keywords, you will have to manually change those yourself. But what I recommend the most is just installing the ones that I provide if that's possible for you. I highly recommend that you update the GTK template and the icon set once I release that, because I've done many updates to the themes, so there will be many positive changes in the themes as well. Another feature that I added in this release is the ability to add um, color schemes to wallpapers that don't have many colors, such as this one. And you're wondering how I'm doing this. Well, it turns out that Pywall provides automatic theming. I mean, it provides auto-established um, themes. So if I go ahead and do this, sorry about that. If I do this, uh, you will get a long list of already established themes. So, for example, if I do base 16 space max, we're going to have this color scheme all around, right? And that's pretty cool. But what I wanted to do is automate this process so that when you add a, an image that doesn't have enough colors to generate a nice color scheme, it's going to opt uh, by grabbing one of those themes at random. So it's kind of like if I did this, right? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate it with this parent image. And I'm going to um, add it once again over here. I'm going to go here and let's say, okay, here it is. As you can see, uh, it won't be able to generate a color scheme. So it will take a while because it's going to try and try and try again. And then it's going to pick one theme at random. 
and there you have it. You have a kind of a nice color scheme, which you can base your own with. I like to lower the light in the common color, like this. Save it, and then we apply it. And honestly, it looks pretty good to me. And after that, there's many things that you can do. You can auto adjust, which will uh, create more clear uh, foreground and background colors. You can lower the brightness, you can lower this, and then re auto adjust. And you get kind of a foreground, background kind of thing going on. You can shuffle the colors if you don't like the auto adjusted one. So if I go ahead and shuffle the colors like this, you'll get some kind of uh, not standard pattern of colors, as you can. I already tell if you know that standard red is one, green is two, and so on. But if I click on how to adjust, uh, you recover that order, which is pretty standard in X term, for example. So basically, that's that's one of the updates that I have to. Another thing you can do is that if you've messed up your color scheme beyond recognition, you can let's say let's try with this one. You can just uh, click on reset and that will drop the color scheme that you have actually add the image once more and you'll have the initial color scheme once again no matter what modifications you have done so it doesn't matter if I do this and if I do that right and then save and apply sorry and apply it won't matter it won't matter as long as I press, as long as I click reset, I'll get the same color scheme back. See? I'll lower the brightness and I'll auto adjust and I'll have a nice color scheme in a matter of seconds. Right. Okay. So, other thing um, that I'm pretty excited about is. Um, the ability to always how to adjust themes so that means that if I go ahead if I enable this if I go ahead and do this thing again where I reset the color scheme you will notice that it's automatically auto adjusted with background and foreground colors so basically what that means is that if I add an image no matter which image I add as long as it can generate a color scheme on its own say this one and I'm going to add it once more you can see that the color scheme is already auto adjusted if I disable this I will get what Pi will, will usually uh, get me which would be a nice color scheme but sometimes you want a little bit extra so you'll get something uh, just like this if you have uh, auto adjust off so for example if I go ahead and remove this one right and try to add it again with auto adjust of let's say color rocks over here go here you will see that the color scheme is not auto adjusted I have to do it manually so basically uh, this comes disabled by default because some people might want to actually um, have their um, their color scheme not auto adjusted but basically that's what the new option does and well I guess that's it uh, I've talked about templates and a few new options that you have in WPGTK remember that everything almost everything that you can do in the user interface you can do from the command line you can uh, set a random theme from here and a bunch of other stuff um, well, and thanks for watching. I look forward to your feedback.